Shakur. Everything I told Shakur, before, like, Shakur was like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this. And he ain't He ain't this. I'm fine. I hope he got the power they saying. Yeah, I'm like, Shakur. One thing about mother cracking, like, a, he's, like, they say he's a pain is cracking. That mother is cracking. Like, <laughs> and Shakur got in there and he felt it. And I felt like Shakur would have fought the fight any other type of way and opened himself up like De La Santa was clipping him. But I just feel like after the last performance, I feel like Tank probably have less res- respect for him. Like, oh yeah, you really a little boy. Like what? Like mm. this had you like this? Like imagine what I'm gonna do. I feel like if I was Tank, that would be my mindset. Like, mm. like oh, I'm gonna kill you. Like I would be licking my chops watching that fight because it's like you really didn't want to engage. You really want to do nothing with this guy, and this guy ain't on my level. So imagine you getting there with me, Tank Davis. Like yeah. you know I'm coming. Dante's boxing nation. What's going on, guys? So that was Richardson Hitchens talking right there. He was obviously talking about Shakur Stevenson's performance against Edwin De La Santos. Now, for those of you guys who don't remember, Hitchens, who's been a longtime friend with Shakur Stevenson, he actually gave a prediction going into that fight. He said it was a 50-50 fight because he's actually been in the ring. He sparred with Santos, and he was extremely impressed with Santos' skill and mainly his power. So when you look at the way the fight played out, it played out like a fight that could have gone either way. Even Shakur Stevenson said after the fight, he was really impressed with Edwin De La Santos' intelligence in the ring, along with his power. But Shakur Stevenson is now really upset with what Hitchens said. He's basically saying he's a traitor. And the main reason Shakur is calling him a traitor is because if you guys recall, Shakur Stevenson later on, he said that he had an injury and that's the reason why he performed that way. Well, if you listen to everything that Hitchens said, he's basically saying he doesn't believe that at all. He's saying that Shakur Stevenson didn't let his hands go because he would have got cooked. That's exactly what Hitchens said. Hitchens, he attributes Shakur Stevenson's cautious behavior to Santos's power and skill set and not an injury that Shakur Stevenson said he had. There's no doubt about it, styles definitely make fights. And if Santos was a flat-footed fighter that had no defense, I think we would have seen the best performance or one of the best performances by Shakur Stevenson. But instead, he was fighting against a guy that not only had power, but great reflexes. He had speed and he knew how to counterpunch. Matter of fact, at the beginning of that fight, I remember he forced Shakur Stevenson to lead. And as Shakur came in, he got caught with a perfect check hook by Santos. And I truly believe that set the tone for the rest of the night for Shakur Stevenson. That's when he said to himself, he's going to have to fight very cautiously for the rest of the night. I mean, by Shakur Stevenson's own admission, he did the same thing when he fought Nakatalia. At the time, he said that he was the hardest puncher he had ever faced. And when he got hit with the first punch, he realized that he had to fight a cautious way. At the end of the day, I think it's safe to say that if Shakur and Santos were to have a rematch, the rematch would look a lot like the first fight. There's obviously no doubt about it. Shakur Stevenson, he wanted to put on the type of performance that Devin Haney had against Regis Progre, or even Javante Tang Davis had against Ryan Garcia, or even Hector Garcia. And instead, it turned out to be Shakur Stevenson's worst performance of his career. And hearing what Hitchens said obviously doesn't help the situation for Shakur. But we'll see if all of the backlash from Shakur Stevenson's performance motivates him and he puts on a better performance if he does fight against someone on the level of a Santos in his very next fight. Now Shakur Stevenson is calling out Emmanuel Navarati, which would actually be an excellent fight. And because Styles does make fights, without a doubt, we would see a better performance by Shakur because Emmanuel Navarati is flat-footed and easy to hit. Now, Navarati does fight at 130, but he's a huge junior lightweight that would be towering over Shakur Stevenson if they were to fight at 135. So hopefully, uh, Emmanuel Navarati takes that fight because that would be a great test for Shakur Stevenson. With that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs and defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com. 
All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODeKey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram.